Algebra 2, Chapter 10.1, Adding and Subtracting Rational Expressions. Essential question, how can you add and subtract rational expressions? Determine some difference of rational expressions with integral exponents of degree 1 and of degree 2. Basically, our preliminary skills needed for this section will be basic uh, polynomial factoring, We're going to be finding common denominators. And just basic adding, subtract, subtracting of like terms. Okay, let's go ahead here. Explore identifying excluded values. Given a rational expression, identify the excluded values by finding the zeros of the denominator. And so the denominator, uh, we have uh, 21 minus x squared over x minus 1. I don't know why 1 minus x squared in the numerator has to be in parentheses, but the denominator of this expression is going to be x minus 1. Since division by 0 is not defined, the excluded values for the expression are all the values that would make the denominator equal to 0. So if we set the denominator x minus 1 equal to 0, and solve for x and add add 1 to both sides of this equation, we get x equals 1, which really means x cannot equal 1. So that's an excluded value. So, uh, so x cannot equal 1. Begin simplifying the expression by factoring the numerator. Okay, in the numerator, whether in parentheses or not, we have a difference of squares. So we can rewrite this 1 minus x squared as uh, 1 minus x or 1 plus x and we're dividing by this we keep the denominator in place which is x minus 1 now we go over continue on so we have again 1 plus x 1 minus x and in the denominator we can take this x minus 1 and pull out a negative sign from this and make this negative 1 minus x. So what cancels out here? Well what's going to cancel is this quantity 1 minus x in the numerator and the 1 minus x in the denominator and we still have a negative sign on the bottom so this negative sign will come up on top so we have left negative 1 plus x, which is going to be equal to uh, distribute the negative sign to both terms inside the parentheses. So we have negative x minus 1. We'll bear simplification. And so summarizing here in part e, the simplified expression is uh, negative x minus 1 whenever x is not equal to, to 0 to uh, 1, excuse me, I put 0, x cannot equal 1, and that's what we had here from the prior page, yes. What's the domain for this function? I'm going to use interval notation, the book uses inequality notation, but we have greater than negative infinity and up to but not including 1, and then union, we have um, 1 comma infinity. Now that's going to be our domain. Now what is our range going to be? Well our range is going to be what we would get uh, it's going to be the part of the range is not allowed. Y cannot equal something. Determine what that is. If we plug 1 into this expression Right, what we have left, let's say f of 1, since x cannot equal 1, that's going to be equal to negative 1 minus 1, which equals negative 2. So y, therefore, cannot equal negative 2. So our range is going to be greater than negative infinity up to, but not including, negative 2, and union 
negative 2 up to but not including infinity. And what this looks like graphed in the calculator is, is this. I will go to y equals c. We have the expression entered. We graph. We cannot see any discontinuities here. But if we go to table view, what do we see where x equals 1? We see an error. And we should be able to see that if we interpolate between negative 1 and negative 3, negative 2 fits in there nicely. So if we have what we had left over here, negative x minus 1, and we have that in red, it's going to do what? It's going to go right over. And everything the same except, in this case, x equals 1 is defined as negative 2. So that's what we notice with rational expressions. Most of the time you're going to have some value that it, possible x value that's that's excluded. Okay, reflect. I don't want to reflect on this. Okay. Writing equivalent rational expressions. Example one, simplify the expressions. So it says write 3x over quantity x plus 3 is an equivalent rational expression that has a denominator of x plus 3 times quantity x plus 5. So we have the denominator of x plus 3 already. The factor missing from the denominator is x plus 5. So what we can do is we introduce the common factor by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by x plus 5. And here it is. I'm circling it right here. And when we multiply by this quantity x plus 5 over quantity x plus 5, we in effect are multiplying the whole expression by since any expression divided by itself is 1, we're actually multiplying by 1, which we're not f affecting the overall value of this. And so what we end up with is an equivalent expression here below that 3x over quantity x plus 3 is equ equivalent to what we see here. So that's how we can get a, a common denominator. And, and now uh, B, simplify the expression. Now I mentioned what a prerequisite skill for this would be factoring. And so it so says simplify the expression. Well, the first thing, uh, we write out the expression and, and factor the numerator and denominator. I'm just going to go ahead and take the numerator here. We have x squared plus 5x plus 6 is going to be equal to, we have factors of x squared are x and x. And then what two numbers will we'll multiply together equal 6, but when add together equal 5, what are going to be 2 and 3? So we factor the numerator and the denominator. Well, already the numerator is factored to be quantity x plus 2 times quantity x plus 3. Next, we have our denominator. Well, we have this x squared plus 3x plus 2, that can be factored into, again, we have to ask ourselves a question. What two numbers, when added together, equal 3, but when multiplied together, equal 2? Well, that's going to be easy. That's going to be 2 and 1. So we have quantity x plus 2 times quantity x plus 1. So here we have left over from our denominator up here, we have quantity x plus 2, quantity x plus 1, times quantity x plus 3. So x plus 2 over x plus 2 cancel out to equal 1. We have x plus 3 over x plus 3 cancel out to equal 1. So divide out like terms. So what we have left is 1. We have to remember that when we cancel on the numerator, we still have 1 there. So we're going to be left with 1 over x plus 1. So this is going to be a simplified uh, version of our original expression above. So you'll notice that a lot with rational expressions. You're going to cancel a lot of things the way problems are worked out or engineered a lot. Okay, next, your turn. Write 
5 over 5x minus 25 is an equivalent expression with a denominator of of x minus 5 times 20x x plus 1. So the first thing I'm going to do is take I'm going to take this 5 in the numerator, leave it there, and the denominator I'm going to factor out of 5 because 5 is common to both terms as 5x and then minus 25. So we're going to put x minus 5 here. Okay, so now we want to have a denominator of, of uh, well, what's happened to 5 over 5? So that's going to cancel out. So we have 1 over x minus 5. And we want to have equivalent expression with the denominator of x minus 5, 20x minus 5 times 20x plus 1. So we can multiply both the numerator and the denominator by this x plus 1. And so now we have x plus 1. So what do we have left? We have to parenthesize this. We have x plus 1 over x minus 5 times 20x plus 1. So and and really for this So I think we're just going to leave it. Well, we can multiply these back together here. But that's an equivalent expression right there. Okay, we have simplify the expression. Here we have an expression here. 3. Now we can write everything. And again, it takes factoring here. We have x plus x cubed up here. And then we have 1 minus x squared. And down here we have we have x squared minus x to the sixth power. We can go ahead and factor out of this x times x plus x cubed x so we have 1 plus x squared. This next expression, 1 minus x squared, we can rewrite as 1 minus x times quantity 1 plus x. Okay, so we've factored quite a bit in the numerator and the denominator. We can rewrite this expression as a different square. So square root of x squared is x. And then we have minus the square root of x to the sixth power, which is going to be x to the third power. And then we have x plus x to the third power. Now, do you remember that we had this x times x to the third power right here? If we just left this alone, remember we factored out this, these babies can cancel out right here. And what we have left is x minus x cubed. 
Well, that's going to be working to the right. We have 1 minus x times quantity 1 plus x. And all that over, we factor out an x. We have x times 1 minus x squared. And just, kind of, I'm going to kind of work below here. We have quantity 1 minus x in the numerator times quantity 1 plus x. And then we're dividing by x. And then we can factor out this 1 minus x squared to be quantity 1 minus x times quantity 1 plus x. And then we can cancel out 1 minus x over 1 minus x cancel each other. 1 plus x over 1 plus x cancel each other. So we're left with 1 over x. So this is going to be our simplified expression for this sample problem. Let's see, anything else? Add or subtract. Yeah, I don't want to go any much farther into this. I want to get to those exercise sets here where you get a common denominator. Well, yeah, this takes us through a problem here. Okay, your turn. Add each pair of expressions and find the result noting the combined excluded values. Well, what we want to do is get the same value here. Well, we know that our 1, problem 4, 1 over 1 minus x squared is going to be 1 over 1 minus x over 1 plus x. Okay, that's what, that's what this is going to be on the right. And so what we can do is we can multiply, it says add each pair of, air pair of expressions. So we take negative x squared and to get equivalent expression we're going to going to multiply by 1 minus x squared, okay, which is, which is that, and we're going to put this uh, in the denominator, 1 minus x squared. And then we say plus now all we've done is we multiply by 1 minus x squared over 1 minus x squared plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. So what we have is a common denominator. So we have in our denominator now 1 minus x squared. In our numerator we have negative um, x squared times quantity 1 minus x squared, and then we have plus 1 over 1 minus x squared. And then we can simplify things. And just, we can just go like this here and just, we have negative x squared times 1, that's going to be a numerator, negative x squared. Negative x squared times negative x squared is going to be plus x to the fourth power. And then we have left over plus 1, and we're going to have over
we can just write this as 1 plus x times quantity 1 minus x. And just working to the right and putting this in standard form, we'll have x to the fourth power numerator minus x squared plus 1. And that's going to be all over quantity 1 plus x times quantity 1 minus x. So this is going to be our answer to this one. And subtracting will be very similar. If we subtract, it's going to be everything the same. Now we'll notice that, that x, our exclusions, x cannot be equal to uh, negative 1 or to 1 because we can't divide by by 0. So we can subtract also so for subtraction it's going to be the very same thing except we're going to get minus 1 over here. So that's it. Well as far as I want to go in this introductory lesson and we're going to have some exercise an exercise set will go over a lot of these and further reinforce, I hope, what is your developing understanding. Good luck and thanks for viewing.